So a while ago I picked up this book, Walking in Norfolk, which contains 40 circular walks around the broads, the brecks, the fens and along the coast. Now I've yet to do any of these walks, so I thought today I would pick walk number one and I'll bring you along with me for the day as well. So I've come to Winston on Sea. This is a picturesque coastal village uh, which has a nature reserve nearby, which, ha which is home to various protected and rare species. So uh, I thought we'd take a look and see what kind of wildlife we can find along the walk following the guide in this book. So um, let's, uh, let me open up the book and let's find the description and I'll give you a little bit of a, uh, I'll read you the description from the book here. Uh, so this coastal route beginning and ending in the village of Winston-on-Sea takes in a variety of landscapes along the way. Most impressive of all is the large area of sand dunes immediately north of the village, a nature reserve with several rare and distinctive species. Elsewhere the route follows farm tracks through woodlands and quiet country roads with virtually no traffic. Sounds absolutely ideal. So we start at the beach car park with fine views of the coastline to the south across the dunes and we head towards the hut to the northern end of the car park and follow the track inland through the dunes towards the village and the church. So we'll do that. But I think since um, it says fine coastal views, uh, I think we, can, we would do ourselves a bit of a disservice if we didn't check out those views right now. So right now we're heading inland towards the church and we're going across this kind of area of scrub, kind of dune area. Uh, there's lots of little flowers and things about. It's a little bit cloudy, so I'm not sure how many butterflies and things will actually come out today, but uh, hopefully we'll see some good stuff. So I barely started on the walk and this area behind me I've just found uh, is kind of covered in brambles and I think it's honeysuckle and when the sun comes out there's clouds of butterflies all over the place. Like this skipper butterfly. The skippers can be tricky to tell apart but I believe this is a small skipper due to the orange tips of the antenna. It's also a male. It has dark bands on its wings that are specialised scent scales that release pheromones. After following the road for a short time through the edge of the village, I came to the entrance of the Winston Dunes Nature Reserve. Just before the entrance is this budley bush that seems to be very popular with the peacock butterflies. I'm now entering the area of uh, the Winston Dunes Nature Reserve. So right here we have the area of scrub um, to uh, behind the camera there. We have woodland consisting mostly of birch trees and over behind me this way uh, is dunes heading towards the beach. It kind of uh, separates the, the beach from the path here. So I'm following the path coming in this direction which kind of hugs the edge of the, uh, the woodland area, the birch woodland and uh, we're heading over in this direction. I think I might spend a little bit of time exploring the, uh, the dunes in this kind of nature reserve area and seeing what kind of things we can find. One constant companion to my walk are the grasshoppers that jump out of my way as I walk through the grass. This is a common green grasshopper. It can be identified by its song, a fast ticking of increasing volume lasting more than 10 seconds. Have a listen.
but it's not just the grasshoppers. Many species of butterfly can be seen too. More peacocks. This grayling butterfly is often found in coastal habitats. It rests with its wings closed, keeping its eye spots hidden. It can be easily mistaken for another similar looking species, the gatekeeper, seen here. The gatekeeper is much more common and can be found in areas of scrub along hedgerows and woodland rides. Another species favouring heathland is this small copper, here enjoying the nectar of this ragwort. The small copper males can be very territorial, chasing away other insects while they wait for a passing female. So there's been quite a few butterflies about. We've also seen plenty of really large dragonflies, but they spent almost all their time on the wing and virtually impossible to catch on camera. But uh, I'll keep trying. Hopefully, we'll get something good. Uh, so I'm now heading, kind of, I'm heading towards the beach at the moment, just kind of taking in this kind of scrub dune uh, land that we've got going on here. And um, and then I think once I've uh, got a little bit further that way, I'll make my way back to the path and we'll carry on with the, the walk from the book. I got as close to the beach as I could before turning around and rejoining the path, still hoping to catch some dragonflies on camera. Luckily, my effort was soon to be rewarded. This wasn't exactly how I expected to film my first dragonfly of the day. This unfortunate migrant hawker has got itself caught in a spider's web. I believe this is an immature male due to its colourings. The mature males are darker with blue spots and yellow flecks. The Margaret Hawker adults emerge in July and can be seen through to November or later in warm years. They are very common species and some of the largest and fastest flying dragonflies, catching their prey mid-air with their aerial acrobatics. They can hover and even fly backwards. Although its powers of flight aren't going to help it here. At first I didn't see the spider and I was thinking to help it escape, but as I moved around to get a different angle it became apparent that that wasn't an option. This dragonfly has become food for a labyrinth spider named after the complicated hidden passages and tunnels in their webs. The shape of their webs often make people think they are the deadly funnel web spiders, but they are quite harmless to humans. They normally feed on grasshoppers and crickets which need strong, thick webs to catch. The webs are so thick and strong that in the 16th century, monks in the Austrian Alps began layering them together to make canvases for them to paint on. When it comes to animal identification in the field, I'm still very much learning. There are many subtle differences that help with ID, but sometimes you might not get close enough or get the right angle, so I'm making educated guesses on some of these. This is a very brief glimpse of what I think is a black-tailed skimmer. I get a much better look at this ruddy data. This dragonfly is exhibiting some very interesting behaviour. It is pointing its abdomen up towards the sky. This is termed the obelisk posture. Many dragonflies adopt this posture when they begin to overheat. By pointing their abdomen directly at the sun, they minimise the surface area of their body that is exposed to solar radiation. So the path continues this way, uh, following along this fence. The fence here separates the kind of the path from, of the dunes from the woodland area over there. So we're just going to follow along this path until uh, all along the fence until the path veers away and uh, we'll move on to the next stage of the walk. A little bit further up the path, the fence actually separates away from the woodland and leaves this sort of large area of open heathland separated out from where the walkers are. Uh, I guess it keeps it kind of safe and protected from uh, pesky photographers and things like that, like me. Uh, so we'll keep to this side of the fence and uh, just look out over the heath and then the woodland beyond. After following the path for a while longer, I spot some fencing off to the side. I take a detour to investigate and I'm pleasantly surprised by what I find. Now in this fenced off area behind me there is a small pond. Now this kind of habitat is perfect for natridac toads to breed in. They like small, shallow, warm ponds and it's exactly what we've got here. 
Now from my vantage point, I can't see any tadpoles at the moment. I was hoping to see some. We are at the tail end of the breeding season, uh, which could mean that there may be some in there. I can't quite see from where I am because it's fenced off, I can't get very close. Or it may be that they've left the water already. The Natchajack toad tadpoles tend to metamorphose pretty quickly because these ponds don't stay wet for long and they do dry out very quickly. And if the tadpoles don't change fast enough, they end up drying out with the pond. But even though we can't see any tadpoles, there's a couple other things going on. Let's take a closer look. These are known as semaphore flies due to the elaborate courtship dances the males perform. If you look closely, you may be able to see one happening. The male fly has bright white tips to its wings which he vibrates, showing off to the female. During this dance, the male flies over the female and flips 180 degrees to face her again. This quick turn is the fastest known among animals and is too quick for the human eye to follow. This is a blue-tailed damselfly. It's found in a wide variety of lowland habitats, including brackish or polluted water, where it may be the only species present. The male is gripping the female as she lays her eggs in the water. Along with natrojack toads and adders, one thing that this place is known for is its stone chats in a tree just over there. I think I see one. Stone chats are small robin-sized birds. This is a male with its striking black head and white around its neck and orange-red breast. They eat insects like beetles, flies, ants, grasshoppers and spiders. They will also eat seeds and fruits like blackberries. The females seen here lack the black head but have brown backs and an orange tinge to their chests. There are 59,000 breeding pairs in the UK. They nest close to the ground in nests made from grass, leaves, roots and stems lined with softer materials like hair, wool and feathers. They lay 4-6 to six eggs which they incubate for 2 weeks and the chicks fledge 13-17 to 17 days after hatching. Stone chats aren't the only bird on offer today. Linnets are small, slim finches that nest in dense hedges, scrubs and thorny trees. They eat mostly seeds but will occasionally eat insects too. There are 430,000 breeding pairs in the UK, although the numbers have dropped significantly over the last few decades. They are regarded as having a particularly lovely song and were trapped and kept as caged songbirds during the Victorian era. This area of Winston Dunes was used extensively by the military during World War II. To prevent against invasion, they built many defences, such as these concrete tank barricades. Now we've come to the end of the nature reserve, but not the end of our walk. We're going to continue on down this path and see what else we can find. I haven't travelled down this track very far at all, and you wouldn't tell that you are near the coast at all anymore. A completely different environment, uh, with this woodland on either side of me, um, all these ferns, and there's a lot of rhododendron, I think, growing here, um, and there's lots of nettles and things, and uh, so there's a whole sort of different environment here. It's just fantastic that you can go in such short spaces and see completely different environments. Love it. This plant behind me is known as hemp agrimony or holy rope and there's quite a lot of it here and it's absolutely alive with butterflies. There are so many different species, not only butterflies but there's bees, hoverflies and flies. Uh, it's absolutely alive and it's absolutely beautiful.
I've managed to drag myself away from the butterflies for a moment, though it was difficult. There were so many different species there, it was amazing. Uh, but we're carrying on down this track now. Um, we're now coming to some areas of farmland. So either side we have, I think, what they term uh, wet grazing fields. I uh, don't see anything grazing on them at the moment, but um, who knows. Uh, but we're carrying on down here until we come to uh, some farm buildings, and then we'll be taking a track going around uh, some of the, one of the fields. I'm not sure if you heard that over the wind, but that is a yellow hammer. It's one of the few birds I can recognise by the sound. Let's see if it'll sing again. There we go. It's one of the birds that you're more likely to hear than see. It's up in this uh, bush or this hedge somewhere. I can't see it though, unfortunately. Okay, so we've come to the farm buildings, they're now behind me. Uh, so our next directions is to take the track uh, just over this way, uh, just over there, and follow the field around in that direction. So uh, let's go do that. You know, the, the walk itself is hard from over, but I just want to take this opportunity to say that I've had an absolutely fantastic day. Um, it was a little bit ropey at the start, it was a little bit cloudy, there didn't seem to be a lot of wildlife about, but uh, after an hour or so, the, the sun's come out and with it the wildlife. It's been absolutely fantastic. The number of different species of butterflies and dragonflies I've seen, and talking dragonflies, I've just seen one. The coloration of this dragonfly lends itself to being a juvenile common data. The adult males become orange-red with age, and the females are similar to the juveniles, but they tend to be more yellow-brown. This is a common species seen from late June through to November, and is able to remain active in cooler temperatures than other species by seeking out sunny spots to warm up in. Wildlife is just absolutely everywhere you look. You just need to take the time to find it. And sometimes you can be unlucky and it, it just remains hidden. Uh, the thing is with wildlife is it, it doesn't really want to be found. <laughs> but sometimes you can be lucky and you can see stuff. Um, I've had a great day uh, and it's not over yet. We've still got plenty more walk to do. So uh, let's carry on down this farm track. And uh, there should be some special uh, ruins of a church coming up at some point. Um, so be looking forward to that. Okay, we've come to the end of the farm track, so now we've reached this road here, and uh, to the right of us is uh, pri a private property, no public right of way, so we need to turn left and go down this road down here. So this should be, according to the book, a concrete road lined with willow trees. Uh, so I think the willow trees are a little bit further down, let's go take a look. This really is a beautiful part of the countryside. You can see this ditch behind me just stretching out into the distance. You can kind of see uh, insects darting around on the surface and the glimpses of things underneath the surface as well. Uh, it's just a, a wonderful place to be. Okay, so we've been walking down this track for a little way and I think this is now the part that was mentioned in the book um, that w lined with the uh, willow trees, which I think, I think these are the willow trees and uh, they're all the way down both sides of this track. So we know we're, we're going in the right direction. Um, so yeah, let's carry on down here and, and see what awaits us. So we've reached a crossroads here. We need to take the left path. Mm. 
I tell you, when my YouTube channel hits it big and I become rich, I'm definitely buying a house in the country. I just, I just can't get enough of it. <laughs> so we come to the end of the track and we carry on to the right by this lovely little cottage. That's the kind of place I'd like. Maybe something a bit bigger. Continue past some brick cottages. So we've come to another junction. We've got this uh, high brick wall here. That's the way we want to go down this road. Uh, this is called Low Road. We're going to carry on down here. wildlife might have slowed down a little bit. The butterflies are constant companions, but nothing I haven't shown you already. But as I enter into this wooded area, this is something I've been looking forward to seeing. Uh, we have a ruined church over here. Let's uh, take a closer look. Unfortunately for me, when I got closer, I realised there was a wedding taking place in the church. Luckily, I had come down here a couple of days ago and filmed some footage already. I'm standing in the ruin of a 15th century church. This is the chancel of St Mary's, which probably last saw use in the 17th century. In its time, the church would have had its own parish, but today it looks like it could be hired out as a picturesque location for weddings and, I don't know, heavy metal band photo shoots? I'm guessing. So now I've admired the church, it's time to continue the walk. So I've just come down the road here. It swings around to the right over this way, but we don't want to go down there. We want to take the path that goes straight ahead because that is the, uh, the footpath that we want to take. So let's go down there. So we continue on down the track here, go past Low Farm. And there's a track just over here on our right, which could be a little bit tricky, it's quite easy to miss, uh, but that leads off to, to the right, going past some allotments, um, and that's the way that we need to go. Okay, so we're getting close to the end of the walk now. We go past the church and we're coming to the road just behind me here. We're going to take a left and just keep on going through the village of Winston until we get back to the car park uh, by the beach. Um, so we'll have a look through at the village. It's very picturesque and um, yeah, we're almost there. So after a short walk through the village, we're now backing into the, the dunes area and we're coming back up to the car park where we started our journey. Uh, so we're pretty much there. So let's go and have a look at the, uh, the view from the top of the dunes one last time and then we'll probably say goodbye.
Well, that is all from me today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've had an absolutely fantastic day walking around the, the uh, village of Winston and the nature reserve and the dunes. It's been brilliant. And this is just walk number one of the 40 walks from my book. So we've got another 39 to do. And if you want to see those, uh, let me know down in the comment section. Leave a like on the video and subscribe. Uh, we may well do the other 39 in this book. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.